Uh, quick icebreaker, everybody. First, uh, I'm going to ask you three questions, okay? And I want you to keep your hand up as I ask you the question. If you don't, if you didn't know the answer or, do, or don't have the answer, take your hand down. All right, first, who drove here today in an electric vehicle? Okay, who Does drove that here? Count? Huh? Does that count? No, no. <laughs> vehicle. Who drove here today in an electric vehicle while listening to country western music? <laughs> <laughs> Who drove here in an electric vehicle while driving, while listening to country western music and drove General Motors EV1? Oh, there's always got to be one smart guy in the crowd. <laughs> the point of this is um, electric transportation is here and now, and I'm a firm believer of it. Uh, I've been driving an electric vehicle now through various testing programs for over three years. I have driven every electric vehicle on the market today including uh, just recently the Smith electric truck, which I never drove something that big, but I got into it and drove it around too. These are definitely here and now and uh, something to be um, embraced. Um, over the last few years, we've been, I've been heavily involved with the electric tra transportation research at PS. In fact, for probably the last 20 years, uh, I've been involved in, in the electric transportation. I've seen it uh, advance, die, and come back, okay? And as you'll see in some of the future slides, uh, you'll see just how, how uh, this is not new technology per se. Uh, we've done a lot of different things at PS. Uh, in particular, I think uh, the couple of things that I'm most proud of is that I got involved through Chuck Feinberg and uh, in doing some of the work on the Energy Master Plan that was adopted uh, in late 2011. Um, I worked with General Motors on designing the J1772 plug for the, elect for the uh, Chevrolet Volt. Believe it or not, uh, General Motors was going to have its own unique plug along with every other electric vehicle manufacturer at that time. And there was a group, a utility uh, advisory group, and we said, are you crazy? <laughs> You've got to have a standardized way of charging these vehicles or it's not going to work. Okay. Very, it sounds silly now, but you know, five years ago, six years ago, this is what was going on. Technology is advancing so fast with electric vehicles. There's things today that I'm working on that it's just going to be mind-boggling uh, and what's going to be coming up in the future. Um, again, this is not new technology. All right, this is up at the Glenmont home of, of Albert, Ed, uh, of um, Mr. Edison, okay? <laughs> Uh, this is Mrs. Edison's charging, uh, or, or this is uh, her charging station and her electric vehicle, okay? This is the, probably the oldest charging station in the world right now, all right? And it is part of the National Historic Site. I wouldn't want to be hooking up my car to that thing, <laughs> okay? But again, not, ne not new technology. 1914, in Detroit, electric taxis, okay? Now, another quick question for everybody. Why did electric transportation fail back at this point in time? Anybody know why? Why? Uh, two reasons. One, uh, Ford's electric factory <laughs> burned down. And two, the start of World War I. That's, well, no, I'll give you a better one. Uh, it was the Delco electric starter. Okay. okay? With the electric starter, uh, women at that time had to go out and crank these cars and their long petty had just got to go with the times, okay? Delco came out with the electric starter, pushed a button inside, technology, okay? That's why technology is going to play a key role in the future. And I purposely left this slide in here with the wrong numbers, okay? This was in March, very accurate in March. Now, old, old news, we're well over 100,000 vehicles sold. And these are the top four major sellers in the United States right now. So fast forward 100 years, all right? Cars died out. They came back a little bit. They died out again. Here to stay. Every major OEM now is producing an electric vehicle. Every one. Three years ago, as it was said, in New Jersey, you couldn't buy one three years ago. Now, every, everywhere you can go in New Jersey, you can get one of these different kinds of cars. Um, one of the reasons so popular, electricity is a great fuel for these cars. It's stable in price. It's cheaper than, uh, natural, uh, than uh, regular gasoline. And it's better for the environment overall. 
Um, electric prices stay stable. How many times have you ridden by a gas station and the price goes up a dime, 15 cents over the last, I mean, this, you don't know, you can't plan for a day to day what the cost is going to be. Electricity doesn't go up in price. It stays the same. Okay, $64,000 question. How many cars are actually in New Jersey? All right. This is the big chicken and egg scenario here. You know, we talk about infrastructure, where to plan and everything. The amount of cars in New Jersey is a little bit, uh, Jeff and I have talked about this. We're estimating, I mean, Ken and I have talked about this. Yeah, about 4,000 cars right now we're estimating in New Jersey, all right? Compared to the, how many regular gasoline powered cars? Again, um, that's not to be disheartening here. Again, three years ago, these cars weren't here for sale. All right, now they're available. People are embracing the technology. Um, a little bit, we talked about range anxiety earlier. Um, charging and where to charge is going to be the big key in the future. I know it was talked about, and I really agree about a couple key points as far as charging. If you look at our driving patterns, the major corridors, if you look at that Philadelphia to New York, or, or uh, New York down to, you know, LBI, uh, you know, that corridor, the Route 80 corridor. These are the Route 78. These are the major corridors in New Jersey where major public charging could be, you know, located. Um, putting in a DC fast charger every three miles is ridiculous and not needed. It really isn't. And that's not the best way to spend our money at this point in time. Um, a little different chart, but the same thing that shows uh, where charging should occur. The bulk of the charging is going to occur at your home. Everybody has electricity at their house. Everybody. And you can charge on 120. Most of these cars, I mean, I've, uh, we have a test Chevrolet Volt. I bring it home, I charge it on 120. No problem. Not an issue. Okay. Workplace charging is going to be, I think, between home and workplace is going to be the key. I think if investments are going to be made in charging in this state right now, is try to encourage workplace charging. Because I think that workplace charging link is going to be the key for if somebody doesn't have a place to charge at home, they could charge at work and still have an electric vehicle. Very important. Um, concerns have been uh, raised about, okay, um, are we going to melt the grid down with electric vehicles? We would love to have this worry right now. <laughs> okay, that's a big building down the street filled with a lot of engineers that have all the abilities to figure this stuff out. Bottom line is, this would not. This is not going to be an issue. There has been a, uh, occurrences in California where you get some localized grid events, like if you get three people buying a Tesla and they're located on one transformer, and everybody's drawing 20 kilowatts off that one trans, you might going to pop that off. But we'll put a bigger one on. Okay. So I guess the bottom line with this, the, the whole issue, we can control when people charge. We can encourage when people charge, all right? If we need to really focus on that, we could either do time of use pricing for electric vehicles or other incentives um, where we could get people to charge after midnight and before noon. And that's really, if you can get people into that pattern of charging between those time periods, the grid will be able to handle it, even on the worst days. Okay, key takeaways. Um, all the OEMs are making these cars. Electricity is a really great fuel. It's everywhere. Uh, the majority will be of charging will occur at homes and at work. All right? Public charging infrastructure is, needs to be really studied and really where you're gonna, where you're located at is gonna be key. You don't need it everywhere. Key spots. Cost of BVs are coming down and one of the things that people haven't touched on, EVs are really fun to drive. I don't know if anybody's ever driven. They are really cool. I mean, I just got to drive uh, BMW's new i3. That is a sweet car. And um, <laughs> you're really getting people that uh, have got the ability to drive in these things. The Tesla, again, I've driven all these cars. Lack of performance, there is no lack of performance with these vehicles. They drive every bit, in fact, I think even better than, uh, than that gasoline powered car. So, again, thank you very much. I'm going to turn this over to Chuck now. All right.